So let's add pug to our application. First, we need to install pug, of course. Again, install pug. Then inside our app.js, just before the middleware stack, we can add the views. To use it, you just do app.set and then you pass the view engine and then which view engine you want, so pug. This will set the engine, but you also need to tell it where to find the templates or files. So I'm gonna create a folder called views and we're gonna add all our files inside this folder. So here we need to actually give the absolute path. If you remember, it might vary between our operation system. So path.join and here will be the their name to get the absolute path and then we say views which is the name of our folder in there where to find pug files so with this our express application it's set to use pug if you do use something else you do like that so we're going to create a few files and i'll explain as i go first let's do an index index.pug to use it we need to go in our routes and let's do our home page so we've seen before that we're using uh, rest.send we can also use uh, json but now we're going to use uh, render and here the only thing we need to do is to tell which file to use in our case the index so let's try it out uh, before I go any further, I've noticed in here that we installed the logger, but we never get to see over here, and that's because we're using over here um, only development. And if we console log our environment, with the process dot env dot uh, node env. If you console log that, we're going to see that uh, we got in this error over here because uh, it's uh, not like that. It, there's a space over here. So when you do it, it's fine. Sorry about that. So if you console log the node, you get dev over here, but uh, on the environment it's only showing for development so we need to add a or over here and this will allow logger to run even if the process is dev so if i refresh the browser it's dev now our logger is working so this is a little overlook of mine so now let's go back to our bug here we have in the router we are displaying our index I'm gonna close my terminal and this here's my page I'm gonna open up um, the inspector so now to pass some data to our template which is their main functionality is to, to display our data so if I pass this title over here I'll have access to my template just like you can pass any JavaScript object to it and then we can use it inside our template. HTML we will do h1 my var and then you close the tag. For pug you can uh, omit the closing tag and you don't actually need the tag over here so you just do h1 and your variable. If you save and you refresh that's your page one over there. If we get the title that we are passing here, we can just put equals and then call that title. If I reload, there we go, I have my variable from here. I can also interpolate, like if I do a paragraph, I can use like this and do title and then I get my title as well. So to get uh, some more information, for example, if I want to do um, to do CSS, I can do dot my class 
and when I save it, if I check my HTML down here in the inspection, so you can see I have a class over here. If I want to do IDs, it's the same as in um, CSS, dot for class, hash for ID. If I reload, I get my ID. To display an image, I'm going to have this image over here, node. So to display the image, you can do image source. Then you can just uh, pass the path you want. You can also pass other things like height, um, the out. If you want to use um, a variable in here, like for example, in case you're, you're passing a user avatar and you want to pass the username, you can use the normal JavaScript interpolation. This type of string interpolation in here from Pug, it won't work inside these parentheses over here. So we can do dollar sign and, and the back ticks, same as we do in normal JavaScript. So if I reload, there you go, I have my image, I have my out, which is the title, and you have my height. If I remove the height, I get my big picture. So, so now that you saw a little bit about the bug, let's continue and we're going to add some more files. So here I'm going to add a narrow file. Dot bug and also a layout. The layout will be used to display, our, it would be like a, a, the frame for our application. Here we can put things like so CSS imports and other stuff. Our doc type. HTML. So here you can do HTML. Same as we do like uh, in a normal HTML that you do like this and then you close. And then you do your header like this. Same goes for pug. So pug we don't need the closing tags. And we also don't need the symbols around. The only thing pug needs you to do is to manage the spaces over here. I like to work with tabs, but you must stick with one because it's not gonna work if you mess up the indentations. So for example, if I want to put a title over here, if I don't indentate this, you give me an error because it can't be on the same level. So here we can do uh, our style sheet. All these uh, parameters are the same as in uh, HTML. So, so this file is the style sheet we created over here. Don't have anything yet, but we're going to add something soon. So as you can see, it's uh, one indentation for each level. Now the body would be in the same level as uh, header. So we just do like that. And uh, here is how it, it gets interesting. So you do a block and then you do content. So now if you go back to our index, we can delete all of this. And here I'm going to ex extend layout. And now we have access to all this information that is in here. And this block works like you can name it here whatever you like and when you go to your page you do block content and then you can do your template like you can do your page how you like if i refresh in here i got my title as a h1 my header has all that information my css is over here that is coming from the layout so here, the same way we did this uh, block, we can do a footer, we can do a, a head block to give titles and uh, meta tags, whatever, you can put that in a different file, call it meta block, 
Later on, we're going to separate our application in a nav bar and stuff like this. So for now, as you can see, this can help us uh, a lot to separate our application in smaller files with a dedicated uh, functionality. Now let's do the error, extends layout, and here is block content. For the block content, this is going to display our error. So we want the error message, error status. And uh, let's do, uh, here we're going to display the stack from the error. This comes, whenever it happens an error, we're going to get all this information from node, status and the stack. The stack is going to display all the info about the error. But for this to work, we need to fix up our error middleware. So I'm going to open up the middleware. And here in our log, we're only displaying the message we're sending back, but now we want to render this template and display and get this information out. So back in here, first I need to add the next over here because if we don't add, we're not gonna use it, but if you don't add, it's not gonna work. I show you in a bit, but it won't work without it. So here I'm gonna remove all of this. First, we're going to use something called locals. That, and that's a response thing. You can add stuff to it like variables and you can use it to display your messages and things like this. We're gonna use it for flash message, for our error message. It's uh, similar to an application state or your globals. You can do rest.locals, rest.locals. And then, for example, the message, you can do equal error dot message. So here on the pug, we're calling that message, which you see, we don't use uh, error. We are passing straight. It's because it's coming from the locals. Whatever you put over here, you can call it by just the name you gave it inside your template. So uh, let's do locals error. Here we need to check what's the environment so we can display this message only if, if you are on development uh, because you don't want your users to see any of this crap. So app.get and here is the environment. And then if it's uh, development, do error. So this is a ter ternary operator. If the environment equals development, we do this. If not, we send an empty array, so we won't show anything. So if this is true, we do this. If not, we do this. The problem now is that uh, we cannot use the dev over here because here on our uh, configuration, we set to be whatever we define on the environmental variables or development as a default. So we actually, we don't need uh, the package.json here. We don't need to pass this. We did it that time just to show the difference, but let's just take it out. And then whenever you launch the application again, it's gonna default to development, full letter. So here, this will work. Let's continue. Let me just uh, comment. What is this thing does? Set locals. If you ever use the express generator, this is what I'm showing you over here. It comes uh, already made for you if you're using that, but that's using CommonJS. So, so here status, error.status. 
or 500. So either the error is gonna have the status like we set this one here, or it's gonna be 500, which is internal error. Now we do render, and then uh, we call the name of the file, the pug file that we want to use. So error. So now if I refresh, I will get, I need to restart my server and then I can refresh and now I'm gonna get the, here on the error, so we have our message, which is this one. Then we have our error uh, status and then we have the error stack displaying. So that's our, that's our page um, of error template display showing let's just change this uh, remove this 404 from here because we don't need any more so now we have one problem that arises with this next over here as i mentioned it won't work if you don't add the next so i'm gonna remove it and then um i'm going to reload my page now is not showing my page anymore so we need to add the next over here you save and then you can load now it's picking up our error page so now if you run if you're using a uh, linter you're gonna have a error because uh, you have a next empty over here that you're using a next but it's uh, no uh, unused variables so to fix that we have a rule for the ESLint if you are actually doing the the ESLint from the that I show you in the beginning you can find this information here by on the documentation and then you just paste the error and here you can find the information about it but the rule to fix it it's a simple one you just need to go to the yes link and here this is the everything this is the rule no one use vars which you got from here and then the error, args ignore, and then we're gonna ignore next. Same as we did with the require before, we're gonna do the next thing here. That's gonna ignore all the next, if it's going to be empty. So now if you run the yes lint again, there you go, no errors. Okay, so now I'll have our, we are displaying our errors. We got like some, variable to display and the layout we are using our main CSS so to make sure that the CSS is picking up I'm going to go to my local host 88 first I need to run my server it's ready now I can reload it's working so I'm going to open up my main.css and here I'm gonna do a age one color medium sea green. And when I reload, I get my color in there. So my CSS is working from the header over here. So on the next video, we're going to go deeper with bug. We're gonna learn how to, to create forms, how to do loops, how to display an array of data like our users. So stick around and um, I'll see you in the next lesson.